Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. A situation that has lasted about four to five years in River State and of course has gotten public outcry numerous times from the people of Port Harcourt is uh, the black suit situation where of course the residents have complained of uh, you know the seeming presence of black suit in the atmosphere. Um, it has, of course, um, um, you know, been seen on the windshields of residents. It's been seen in the houses of residents. But the one that, of course, uh, creates the most fear is how much of it is getting into the body and the, the lungs of residents of Port Harcourt. We're speaking this morning with Dr. B.A. Briggs as a public health physician. Uh, good morning, Dr. Briggs. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Good to have you on the program. I, I want us to start with um, understanding for persons who, I, I believe you reside in or you live in Port Harcourt also. Absolutely, I do. So, so can, can, let's start with the foundation, you know, with this discussion. How long has this been going on? And is there still, or is there yet any understanding as to where this suit is coming from? Yes, it started about 2017. That was when it became very visible. All of a sudden, we wake up in the morning and we see on our floors black suits. We see on our tables, on our cars, we uh, up, um, cut out um, black substances in the morning. You try to clean your nostrils in the morning and you see black substances inside your nostrils. So that was when it became apparent that something absolutely is going wrong with our um, air quality in Port Harcourt. So that was uh, visible around 2016, 2017. Okay, and it has lasted for, for this long and nothing has been done until recently, in the 1st uh, of January 2022, that the governor did a broadcast and uh, declared war against the suit. And the major components of the suit have been identified as um, gas flaring and artisanal refining. But also we've seen in recent years um, the military and other security agencies that um, seize illegally um, crude and set them ablaze. So that's also one of the major factors. We see people burning um, tires, especially in the abattoirs. You see them using tires to roast the meat that we consume every day. These are all again, um, emissions from cars and generating sets, well, although their contributions are a little bit minute. Dr. Briggs. Dr. Briggs, I understand you're not, you know, with, uh, with the government, you know, and you're not necessarily here to, you know, speak on the investigation into the black suit. But these things have been happening. The things you're mentioning now, the gas flaring and the roasting of bush meat and the likes, have been happening prior, you know, 2017. Um, so how come it became so much worse from 2017, like you mentioned? Um, yes, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow will, uh, will be um, exactly 60 two years of the discovery of oil in commercial quantity in the library bios estate. And since that time till today, gas flaring has been on. Gas flaring, if you recall, was outlawed in, in the 1970s. Each time the deadline for the stoppage of gas flaring reaches, the government of the nation will keep extending the, uh, the deadline, you know, because uh, they see it as, if, as a way of uh, revenue generation. And over the years, these or uh, gas flaring has been going on in different parts of the Niger Delta. So I think that to an extent, the atmosphere has reached its, its threshold and further complicated in Port Harcourt by the activities of the illegal oil refiners in the creeks of the Niger Delta exacerbated the effect of the suit that we are now seeing in Port Harcourt. So in 2018, the River State government set up a technical committee that in, tried to investigate the sources of the suit and they came up with um, a, a preliminary report wherein they said oil, um, gas flaring, and artisanal refining are the major causes and sources of the suit in River State. So, uh, Dr. Briggs, uh, do we still have you? Okay, well, while we're trying to reconnect with uh, Dr. Uh, B.A. Briggs, uh, we also have with us uh, this morning Fine Face Dumnamene. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us. He's an environmentalist. And uh, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Fine Face. Good morning to you. Nice to meet you. Happy New Year, everyone. 
Okay, it's good to have you join us this morning. The, the governor of Rivers State has, uh, like uh, Dr. Briggs has mentioned, that nothing has been done as regards the suit as since the time it started off, and that it's just in recent time where the government, in his New Year message, talked about clamming down on illegal refineries. And, and as such, it could just mean that activities of illegal refineries in Port Harcourt uh, is really responsible for the suit. Uh, what are your thoughts? We'd like to share your thoughts on that. Yeah, my thoughts are that uh, the government and governor of River State have actually started something before the New Year Day broadcast that led to the action currently being taken. What they, they did around 2018 was the setting up of a committee headed by the then Environment Commissioner, Professor Rosalind Koya, to investigate the sources of suits in Port Harcourt and its environs. That was done, but in date, the governor and government of River State have not released that report to the public after the governor received the report submitted to him. And we do not know why that report has not been released, because the crackdown we currently have against artisanal crude oil refiners, it must be as a result of that report that the governor has not made public. But then we are aware that if the governor had made that report public, it would have been able to let people know, let us know as advocates in the civil society organizations to see how we can work with that report to getting this done. Then the action of the governor, you know, on 1st uh, January 2022, in his broadcast, he talked about the issue of artisanal refinance steps he's going to take. And then days later, he released the statement that, uh, you know, criminalized and uh, where he declared about 19 artisanal crude oil refiners wanted. Well, these are steps to be taken to address the issue of suit and related environmental pollution that we are experiencing in Port Harcourt and its uh, environs. But then I think that uh, the, the, the action of the governor is one-sided, one-sided in the sense that these youth have said over time that they have more people in their employment than the River State government itself. So out of the thousands of people that they are working with, that they, they, they form to become that big, big, I think pointing at 19 names is just like a, a tip of the iceberg. And some of these names that the governor made public are just single names. Some of them are just nicknames. They are not really well investigated and uh, presented uh, reports that the governor got. And I think that doing some of these things without having to bring on board a lot of them from different local government areas of Rivers State becomes an issue. Because as it is today, we have come to see that it is difficult to actually say this is a particular local government area in River State that they are not carrying out acts of artisanal crude oil refiners. Uh, refining in, 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 in River State. And I think the effort should be holistic by the governor, by not just displaying them from what they are doing, but also trying to put in place alternative livelihood opportunities that we have been advocating and pushing for the governor to do as a way of not making their being displaced from this action to cause insecurity issues and other challenges to society. Well, uh, Mr. Fineface, you know, I, I, I'm sure you would agree that just before we get to talk about the health challenges proper with Dr. Briggs, um, Mr. Fimekas, I'm sure you would agree that this has gone on long enough, you know, for a government that truly was interested in making a difference to have made a difference. Um, these complaints have been, you know, going on for years. The report has been, you know, given to the governor. He has, you know, made statements. But if, it's, if the governor was serious about ending this, then it should have been over by now. Um, some people have equated this, you know, and stated that this is very similar to, like, the drug business in Colombia. There's a lot of corruption there's a lot of, you know, things that are going on behind the scenes that make this almost impossible to end. Do you agree with that? Yes, I agree with that. Because apart from working as an environmentalist, I am the executive director of Youth and Environmental Advocacy Center. And I also function as the national facilitator of platform for the coordination of artisanal food oil refiners in the Niger Delta for modular refinery. I work with a lot of these boys. I talk to them, go to the crease and talk to them. I've been to where they re I talk to them to stop what they are doing. It is a strong cartel. The, the artisanal <coughs> refinery is a strong cartel that cut across River State, cut across other states in the Niger Delta, and extend to neighboring countries within the West African sub-region. So, but all this cannot be possible if we do not have the hand of security operatives inside. Because the former president and uh, head of state of this country, Sami Abacha, said any problem that lasts for over 24 hours, look very well, the government has a hand inside. <coughs> so I think that what we are experiencing in River State and other parts of the Niger Delta is as a result of the involvement, aiding and abating of these activities by the security operatives. 
and some of the Abuja boys and the Lagos boys and then the Portaco boys and other states. So it's a, a network of cartel states to address of truth and related issues. I believe that if we can collaborate, collaborate with the security operatives, collaborate with the federal government and other agencies and stakeholders, we'll be able to arrest this situation and bring it to a halt for everybody to have a sigh of relief from the impact of suit on the people. We are all smokers of suit in River State and it's telling more on the aged people and children that are more affected by, by, by this suit and we have to stop this suit now. Okay, let's also bring in Dr. Briggs at this point and talk about the uh, health implication of this black suit. Uh, what are the implications of uh, the suit? Okay, the health impact of the suit uh, is largely divided into um, early and late complications. One of the early complications of the suit is skin irritation, nausea, vomiting, confusion, acute bone care asthma, acute respiratory distress syndrome, sudden infant deaths, pneumonia, pneumonitis, and a lot of other complications that I cannot list. Then the, the late complications we are talking about um, it is uh, ischemic heart disease, cardiovascular diseases, cardiovascular accidents. We have lung cancer, liver cancer, kidney cancer of the kidney, kidney failure, and even ultimately death. So it's really there. And right now we've had um, researches that have been done in Port Harcourt that show that um, the incidence of upper respiratory tract infections have increased amongst children under the age of five. The research to um, um, ascertain the healthiness of the sperm of male residents in Port Harcourt have also been done and revealed that male residents in Port Harcourt have very varying degrees of structural abnormalities of their sperm cells. And that simply means that majority of the males that reside in Port Harcourt cannot impregnate their spouses. Researches have been done in, in teaching hospitals here in Port Harcourt where they found out an increase in the incidence of death defects. Okay, okay, one of the such studies uh, revealed that 20.73 per 1,000 live births come down with birth defects. Of course, if you compare that with um, the southeast, which was uh, 4.51, northeast was 5.23. So you see that the incidence of birth defects in Port Harcourt is exponentially higher as compared to other parts of the country. So this is what we are seeing. It's not something that will happen. It's something that is happening that I'm telling you these research findings have been published in international journals. So we are actually dying slowly, but surely, okay? And um, um, the fine face has spoken as uh, an advocate. I am speaking strictly as a medical doctor, okay? But we have been engaging the government in on this issue. And one of the times we had a, a meeting with the government representatives, um, as under the ages of Stop the Suit campaign in 2018, they told us very clearly that the issues of the environment is within the exclusive release of the federal government. And the attempts have been made to draw the attention of the federal government on the issue of black suit in Port Harcourt. However, the federal government and our agencies have not, you know, lived up to their responsibility. It was only recently that the governor, in his wisdom, had to um, carry out steps that he feels uh, in, uh, uh, to stop the suit, one of which was to declare a war against artisanal refining in the Niger Delta. But, you know, there is little or not much that the gov governor or the government of River State can achieve except the federal government and other agencies of the federal government, such as the um, NESDRA and OSRA and all the other agencies of government, federal ministry of environment, all come together, you know, to put a stop to the suit. Just like the Namene Fine Face was talking, he talked about the complicity of the security agencies in aiding and abating those that are involved in artisanal refining. And while we are trying to stop this, we do not want to create another social problem where uh, the boys will be hunted down, their facilities destroyed, and then they, they, they don't have an alternative source of livelihood 
and then they will now resort to criminality and further worsen the already very volatile security situation we have in the Niger Delta, especially in Port Harcourt. So while we are trying to stop the suit, we're also looking at an alternative. And one of the alternatives we have proposed to government is um, modular refining or cellular refinery so that these boys will have something to do. Their, their businesses will be legitimized, taxes will be paid, will create employment, and they can be properly regulated. And let me also say this for, for, for record purposes, that a stakeholder democracy network, in an NGO, SDN, carried out its research on the quality of petroleum products produced by the artisanal refiners and those imported by the federal government. And it will shock you to note that the research findings that have been published and is on the net uh, revealed that the quality of petroleum products from the artisanal refiners is higher than those that are imported from the, by the federal government. What this simply tells us is that um, these people are providing a solution to a problem, all right? And if, if you see that there is a massive shortage of petroleum products in circulation in the country. So there is a ready market. These boys have ready markets. Most of the um, banks, schools, public um, and other business uh, institutions that are pre-corporate organizations that do their business in Port Harcourt and environs, they get their products for these people. So they are providing an economic uh, you know, solution to, to uh, um, some of the challenges we face. So if we begin to stop them abruptly, there will be a massive shortage and, uh, and then businesses will collapse. And we do not want this to happen because we want the boys to do it in a way that they can be properly regulated and our environment is not polluted. And that's exactly what we, we stand for and that's what I advocate as uh, an environmental advocate. But having said that, we commend the governor for what he's done. You know, for the first time we are seeing concrete steps being taken to um, uh, to stop the suit. In fact, yesterday we heard on um, on the news that the governor visited one of the artisanal refining sites and went to the press and security men and they chased the boys out and all that. We commend him, but we also want this thing to be holistic. We don't want temporary um, or quick fixes. We want something that is sustainable in the long in the long term. The, the only right. way we can sustain it is that we are, there is a transition from the artisanal refinery to modular refineries or cellular refineries so that these boys have something to do and they are easily engaged so that they don't become a menace to the society. All right. I, I want to um, um, find face uh, Dua, uh, Dumna Mene to also speak with regards to that. Um, what are the possible solutions? How do you think this can be you know, solved? Um, do you agree with uh, Dr. Briggs? Uh, that we should encourage them, uh, not chase them away from uh, the, the the creeks. Uh, but these persons yeah, I didn't say we should, Please, I didn't say we should encourage them. I mean, encourage I them to move into modular, modular refining, uh, modular refining and, instead uh, in, of... In, 20, in 2018, the vice president, the Yemi Osimbajo, came to Port Harcourt and held meetings with stakeholders of the Niger Delta. And there he said very clearly that he was going to support the... Uh, uh, Licensing of modular refineries. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. In a bit, yeah. in a bit to stop the artisanal refining. But since that 2018 till now, nothing has been done in this regard. And well, that's exactly well, what we're saying. Well, the federal government should be um, hold on, Dr. Briggs. committed to doing what they have said they are going to do. Dr. Briggs, kindly hold on, um, so that we can have um, a fine face also get to share with us. Um, I believe that you also, you also have been on the ground and you've uh, gotten to interact with some of these persons. So do you agree with this idea of, you know, setting up modular refineries and, and the likes? And do you think that these persons in question really would be interested in the idea of modular refineries? I agree with uh, Dr. Briggs. And uh, I must say that I the right person because since 2017 that the vice president, then acting president, talked about modular refineries as alternative livelihood opportunity for you who are involved in artisanal crude oil refining. And the person who has been working with them, preparing them, training them across the Niger Delta to embrace that uh, modular refinery as alternative to artisanal crude oil refining, which is causing massive environmental problem in the Niger Delta. But to date, the federal government has not taken concrete steps to be able to address that issue. And I think the reason is also because the federal government did promise that the moment we put them on cooperative society, what we now call the modular refinery multi-purpose society, that they are going to give them license. We are putting them across a cooperative society on the license. In 20, we are also to organize a, a, an investor summit where we are bringing an investor from the United Kingdom to come to this issue of funding a project so that a lot of this address. And I also propose what I call the Presidential Artisanal Crude Oil Refining Development Initiative, PACODI. PACODI is an initiative like Dr. Brin modifies what they are currently doing, make it more friendly, and is able be able to make it a legal framework. 
And it was because of that proposal I made in 2020, you know, July 27, aligned with the Presidential Artisanal Gold Mining Development Initiative, which the federal government have legalized for illegal gold miners in parts of the North and West. That came in. And it was on the basis of that idea. I got leverage on. And on June and uh, on March 16 and 17, 2021, they organized a national conference for the integration of artisanal crude oil refining and modular refinery into the Nigerian economy in Abuja. But today, that has not been done. At the state level, I have just proposed in this 2021 what I call the River States Artisanal Crude Oil Refining Development Initiative, RISACODI. That is what we think the federal government and the River State government can do by bringing the youth that are involved in this illegal refining on that platform, develop that platform, modify what they are currently doing, invest into that process, make a law through the state assembly, legalize the entire process, modify it, and they can buy crude, they can refine, they can contribute to the local economy, making that process a legalized job creation venture. We have all these ideas as think tank that we are making this available to be able to address this issue. We are also thinking that if the government not just display them, but also creates employment opportunities, like now the world is moving away from hydrocarbon to clean and renewable energy. The government of River State can invest into solar PVs, creating solar farms in communities that will generate standard electricity in communities and the youth that are involved in this can look for alternative livelihood opportunities around this electricity that is being generated and they can go into something else. But what we have today, displaying them without blueprints on how to engage them meaningfully. We increase piracy activities, we increase criminal activities and may make the state that the, the commissioner told us in 2022 that the state is one of the most peaceful states in the country. It may become a thing of the past if the step currently being taken is not, you know, approached with alternative opportunities for these youths. Just as, you know, the people and we all wait for the government's intervention, uh, the federal and the state government, what can be done? How can the people of River State protect themselves? I mean, are there measures, uh, you know, to protect themselves against this deadly suit? Yeah, the measures to protect themselves by the people are just very few because the people cannot control the air that they breathe when they wake up in the morning or when they sleep at night, they cannot control it. And these particles travel by air. So the people are just helpless in the middle of all this. But how they can help in the fight against illegal refining and other sources of suit. Uh, we are not saying that it's only illegal refining, but the focus now is on illegal refining. Otherwise, you can list a lot of other sources of black suit that is affecting us. So what the people can do is to work with the government, work with the traditional rulers, work with the governor and the government of the state to expose the youth who are involved in this. Be able to tell, let the government understand these are the people doing it, and the government will go after them to stop what they are doing. What they can also do, the security operatives that are aiding and abating this activity that is causing suit, they also live in River State, they sleep in River State, they breathe the air in River State, so they can also be able to help themselves. Their children are also affected. These are some of the ways we can expose what is being done help government to see how we can all collectively address the issue around black suit. Because today, the black suit is there. Their activity is contributing to the environmental pollution that makes fishermen and farmers not to be able to get that again. And the entire water body in river, the pollution we have in river state today is such that it's, it's as massive as the fact that in 50 years time we cannot clean it up. And river state is hosting the largest ever environmental cleanup in parts of Ogoni being undertaken by the Hydrocarbon Pollution Remediation Project, that we are thinking that if it could succeed, it can be extended to other parts of the Niger Delta to address environmental issues. And if River State cannot play that leadership role to be able to work with the stakeholders and address this issue of pollution, it becomes a problem. That so, is why it is worrisome well, to me, being an environmentalist, that in a state like River State, we are talking about suit and pollution. Okay, we do so, not have um, a commissioner for face. environment. Um, the no, apologies. Yeah, I, I, I know. Yeah, the question was to directed go. to. Uh, but of course, you know, this is just to express, you know, that um, the the people of the Niger Delta truly have 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 suffered, you know, uh, with regards to pollution, um, in every regard that in every way that you can describe environmental pollution, they have, you know, suffered. Um, Dr. Briggs, you know, we want you to speak with regards the in, on the health angle. In what ways can people protect themselves? Do they need to? wear face Mask. masks uh, do they need to you know drink certain herbal medication to clean their system i'm not sure what it is 
Um, but uh, I think we've lost us to Briggs. Um, a fine face, if you're still here, can you share with us, you know, if there is uh, any of those steps that are currently being taken to people wear face masks regularly? The people don't wear face masks here regularly. It's unfortunate the people don't wear face regularly. And all the executive orders and directives that we are given to, you know, compel people to use measures, you know, around COVID-19 that should also help to prevent them from inhaling black soot. The people are not adhering to that. So as one of the ways of addressing this, I think the government should try as much as possible to reinforce the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the rules that will make the people to use face masks. And then the government should also try as much as possible to, those who have money, residents can buy filters into their houses. We understand some companies, some big people within the city, they buy filters into their houses that try to filter this air. There are pictures we have in my own house. I do publish about suits in my house, in my office. When you see, I call it black suit fighting back because I campaign against suit. Every 30 days you open your air conditioned AC, you see a lot of suit in it. Every time you get to office, you see a lot of suit everywhere. The pollution, the suit is everywhere. So these measures can be taken. People should wear masks. Those who have money should, you know, get some filters into their houses. And everybody's hand must be on deck to be able to address this issue, you know, of suit by preventing it before all of us turn into very dangerous smokers of suits that will lead to the reduction in our lifespan in the city of Port Harcourt and its environs. All right. Um Fine face, uh, do not many. We, of course, we thought that we we're going to also get uh, Dr. Briggs to quickly uh, share, you know, from a doctor's perspective, you know, ways that you can protect yourself. Um, um, you know, because this is, this is, you know, it should be seen as a national emergency for the people of River State, you know, and the action should be taken immediately. Some of the things that he mentioned also as a health challenges, um, then the later on health challenges that may also emerge are really, really scary. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us and for you know sharing your thoughts with us with regards uh, uh, the Potakot suit. And we'd love to speak with you again, as always. Thank you for having me. Have a nice day, everyone. Good morning. Absolutely. Pretty scary uh, when you mentioned the um, you know the health challenges uh, with we you know that people can deal with you know and too uh, many of them. Too many. You know you know respiratory challenges. You know child uh, birth defects. Uh, you know, failure to impregnate your wife, you know, is one of the things that he mentioned. Um, and, and these are, so the ones that we're experiencing now, you know, one thing I was going to even say, you know, is that we're lucky that they even have research institutes that have been able to carry out uh, proper research to understand the um, increase in the number of certain, you know, health you know, challenges in Port Harcourt because of the suit, very likely because of the suit. Um, so I can imagine what it will be like in 15 years, or in 20 years, or in 30 years, if there's going to be complications uh, that they would still be experiencing in 30 years' time and 20 years' time. Sadly, mm. we do not live in a society where people can sue their government for failures. And, and that's why, you know, I'm, I'm very concerned and we're very concerned about what people can do in the interim to actually survive, uh, protect themselves against the suit. Are there non-pharmaceutical methods that can be followed? Uh, I don't know if we can still, you know, um, connect with uh, Dr. Dr. Briggs, Briggs. If you can hear us, uh, I think we have him back. Thank you for having me, and I'm sorry for the breaking transmission. Yeah, that's fine. We're talking about pharmaceutical or non-pharmaceutical methods, you know, that people can also protect themselves. Now, this is one question that has been asked me several times, and I really cannot provide very specific answers. However, tree planting is one thing. Close your houses, the doors, the, the windows on time, even though the suit will still find it to into your house. But it's better you shut it, but the quantity that will come in will be reduced. Take lots of water, wear protective clothing, clean your nostrils early. If you see or observe any symptoms, you make sure you go to the hospital on time. These are some of the basic things you need to do. Keep your house clean at all times because. It's always be a uh, chip will always be on the floor and you wash your plates regularly before you use them to eat and all that to so try to reduce this impact. But whether we like it or not, whether we know it or not, every day we respire food 24 hours in a day. If you take a cigarette pack, you see only smokers are liable to die long. Smoking causes cancer. And yet these smokers do not smoke 24 hours. But residents of Potakot have been smoking the food on stop 24 hours a day for seven years now or more so you can imagine the danger we find ourselves all right 
Uh, thank you very much, um, Dr. B.A. Briggs, uh, who's a public health physician. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we, of course, uh, uh, encourage you to keep doing the work and informing uh, people of River State and the rest of the country on the danger and the environmental challenge that this is. Uh, we look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. God will help us. All right, stay with us. Uh, we'll move away from uh, River State and uh, the black suits in Port Harcourt. We're going to be talking now about the preparedness of the Independent National Electoral Commission and, most importantly, the electorate in Nigeria for the next general elections. <laughs>